Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head down to Germany and we're going to take a look at another one of the kind of new generation of craft breweries that are popping up down there. There's a hell of a lot of good beer and a hell of a lot of new modern beer coming out of Germany actually these days which is always very good to see. It's very interesting to see how things are changing in Germany with these very very well trained brewers now turning their attention to uh, to brewing uh, American styles of beer. There's some really great stuff going on down there. But for this review we're going to head to a brewery who I've heard some very very good things from, namely from my friend Peter over at the Clueless Drinker. He always used to rave about this brewery but unfortunately on my trips to Germany I was just never able to get a hold of anything from these guys. So when I was in Seistenbolag the other day and I saw that they had a whole shelf full of this beer it was quite a pleasant surprise I have to say so for the first time we are going to go to Freigast Bierkultur and we're having a taste of their Aufschneider Hopfenweizen so this one comes in at 6% ABV and as the name suggests it's basically a hoppier version of a Hefeweizen beer I had a couple of Hopfenweizens for you on the channel so I'm really curious just to see how um, how this one turns out so really looking forward to trying this one and as always I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer. So anyway, as is usual with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I'll hopefully be able to do in the future from Fry Guys Beer Culture. Very first time on trying one of their beers, of course. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefetch, or whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the German beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, on to tell you a little bit about Freigast Beer Kultur then. So Freigast Beer Kultur are based in Stolberg in Malsbach which is just out to the uh, just out the side of Aachen actually in the western part of Germany right next to the uh, the Belgian and Dutch and Luxembourgish border actually it's a little bit out to the east of Aachen city but the company was founded by Sebastian Sauerbach in 2009 and at the time he was working in a brew pub and he was always interested in food production since he was quite young but he had a particular interest in historical beer styles in Germany and making his own interpretations of them so he started making beer as a hobby and the first beer that he produced was actually a Lichtenheine which was called Abraxas and at the beginning he never thought he would be able to earn his living from brewing but he was asked to attend some different Belgian beer festivals and he was also approached from various importers from different countries. I think it was Italy, uh, America, uh, and I think Denmark actually. There was people wanting to import his beer into Denmark and that really got the ball rolling for his company. But so far he's produced well over 300 different beers and he says that he's just basically a bit of a taste fetishist. He likes to travel across the world and research different ingredients from different places. You know, in the article that I was reading from him said that he was in Jordan, he was going to Sweden and he was going to Russia or something like this. Apparently he just goes on absolutely crazy journeys, uh, picks up some local ingredients, takes them home and then uses them in these beers. Um, so yeah, it, it's a really interesting one and it's quite fitting actually because the name of the brewery literally translates into English as being the Free Spirit Brewery. So he kind of sounds like he's a little bit of a hippie um, and just likes to go around and try lots of different things, a little bit like myself I guess you could say. But um, yeah, a really interesting brewery this one. As I said, my good friend Peter uh, over at the Clueless Drinker, this is a brewery that he absolutely used to rave about and I will put the link to his channel in the description below and you can check out his reviews of some of the other Fry Guys beer cult of beers that he did when he was living in Germany because they are supposed to be very very good and like I said to find this one in Seistenbolaget now was uh, I was I was very pleased when I was finally able to get a hold of one of these beers to review but that's all you really need to know about Fry Guys beer cult tour just now there wasn't too much information available on these guys when I was searching through newspaper articles and blog posts and things like that. Um, it basically just seems to be quite a small scale brewery, although I believe they are contract brewing some of their, uh, their other things. 
uh, at different breweries just to make sure they meet the volumes and stuff like this because if they're if they're sending this one to Sweden and it's a member of the regular core range in Seistan Belaga they will have to brew it on a, a considerable volume actually so I think they might be doing a little bit of contract brewing uh, on the side as well but yeah as I say a brewery that has a very good reputation and one that if you get the chance you should check out there's some very very exciting things going on in Germany in the craft beer scene a lot of you know well trained brewers over there turning their attention to the more kind of American styles of beer although this one is, uh, you know, is a little bit closer to uh, the original ones that you would find in Germany, just a little bit more hoppy and, uh, and uh, quirky, I guess you would say. But yeah, that's all you really need to know about the brewery just now. If you want to learn a little bit more, check out the brewery website in the description below. And as always, you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that, and that will keep you up to date with all the latest goings on and all the beers that they're releasing. So yeah, let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself then. So this one, as I mentioned to you at the start of the video, is a 6% hop from Weizen beer. It's hop with Cascade, which of course is a very well-known American hop, and Mosaic, which is really quite widely used today, known for its kind of orangey and tangerine flavour and it's got a malt base of wheat, lager, carrot and Munich malt so it should be a very very nice beer this one it was quite highly rated as well when I checked it out on untapped and rate beer and things like that too but yeah let's get rid of the brewery notes now and we can get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself so as you can see pretty plain artwork on this one some of the other artwork that you get from Frygas beer, uh, Fry beer culture is a little bit more kind of inventive than that but I do have to admit I like the um, the symbol that they have on this one is really quite nice. But there you can see that is also on the bottle cap. It doesn't tell you too much about the beer on the um on the back. It does tell you though that this beer was brewed by Freigeist Beer Kultur at Urban Chestnut Halata or Brauerei in Volzna uh, Voln Volnzach, um, to pronounce that properly. So yeah, like I said, this one was contract brewed at uh, another brewery, I'm guessing. But yeah, let's get this guy out then and we will get on with the tasting. Really looking forward to having a go at this beer finally. It's been sat in my fridge for about a week actually. So yeah, let's get it out and into the glass. And I'll tell you straight away, as soon as you open up this one, it does, you get those typical German Hefeweizen and malty notes out of it, that big doughy wheaty kind of thing. This one, I think there's a little bit, try and get a little, yeah, there's a little bit of haze in there. But yeah, as you can see with this beer, it's pretty much poured, as you would expect, albeit it's a little bit more clear than you're going to get from some Weizen beers, but it's got that lovely, typical, bright, yellowy, golden colour to it. There's a solid finger of a frothy um, white head to this one. I would say it's actually got a little bit of a creamy edge to it rather than being pure white but one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and a few little ones just heading up towards the bottom of that head there. If I put my fingers behind the glass you can see there is a degree of transparency to this one but it really is um, pretty damn hazy I have to say but you can see uh, when you look at the final 100 mils or so that's left in the bottle there um, you will get a lot more haze out of it. So we'll have a taste of it then we'll add the last part of the beer to the glass. But yeah, a really nice looking beer this one. But nothing particularly surprising about this beer when you consider that it is a Hefeweizen. But I will say the carbonation does seem to be fairly active in this one actually. You can see quite a lot of carbonation just heading up towards the, the bottom of that head there. But the head incidentally has faded away to be quite a thin foamy layer rather than a big thick finger uh, type thing. But yeah, let's have a smell of the aroma and see how we get on with this one then. Oh yeah. So straight away with this beer, you know, you get that typical German Hefeweizen malt base to it. You know, you've got those big doughy uh, bready yeasty qualities. This one you can smell the really smooth wheat under there but it's got quite a banana and kind of clovey element to it. You know those typical notes that I'm always talking about. There's a little touch of a biscuity sweetness to this one. You can actually um, pick up a little touch of the caramel kind of coming out in this one as well. A lot of the smoothness and the white bready smoothness that you'll get out of this beer will also be coming from the Munich malts. As I've told you in my German reviews before, um, I used to live in Heidelberg. I studied in Heidelberg for a little bit and when I was over there, I absolutely loved the Hefeweizen style before I went to Germany. But when I was there, I went off it a little bit, actually. Um, I found them really quite heavy beers. I could only ever really drink one of these as a tasting at a time. I could never ever session um, a Weizen beer. 
Um, but then I discovered the Hellas and the Dunkels and then the Doppelbox I already knew and the Rauch beers were where my whole love of beer began. The Weizens for me is a more it's more of a treat, it's more of a kind of unusual beer for me these days because there's not too many breweries actually brewing these types of Hefeweizen and so to have um, one of these new generation German craft breweries brewing one um, is quite exciting actually but this one the malt base for me it really does smell like quite traditional it doesn't smell too far away from um, the likes of things you'd get from the Weinstefan or the you know the Erdingers or or um, Schneiderweiss or anything like that and um, I would say in fairness that it's the hoppiness that makes it a little bit different but you can smell with this one, it does have a little bit more of a kind of caramelly and biscuity edge to it, which is nice. It does have just that little bit of sweetness on top of those banana and clovey qualities and the smooth white bready and wheaty notes as well. So just pay attention to the aroma of the malt base in this one before you get stuck into it. But on the hoppy side of things, it is quite nice. You can get a little bit of that tangerine orange that you would expect from the mosaic. There's a little touch of earthiness in there as well, which again is one of the characteristics. Good little bit of floral aromaticity um, and a little bit of spiciness in there as well. And you can also pick up some of the grapefruity notes, which of course is one of the trademark things of the Cascade. The Cascade is one of the, the old school American hops. It's got that nice sort of 7-8% alpha acid ratio and it gives you those nice... Um, those nice grapefruit notes, whereas the mosaic is, I think it's about 13-14% alpha acid in that hop and you can really pick up those um, orangey tangerine notes like I said and it does have a little hint of a blueberry note as well, you can get that as one of the little complexities from the mosaic hop, but as I always say, take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it. This one does remind me of some of the old American um, wheat beers that I used to have just because of the big um, juicy hoppy notes that you get over, but it does, like I say, have a very traditional um, German malt base to it, this one. So without further ado then, let's get stuck into this beer. This one is the Aufschneider Hopfenweizen from uh, Freigeist Bierkulter, just outside of Aachen in Germany. Once again, shout out to Peter over at the Clueless Drinker. Let's have a taste of this beer and see how we get on. Slange, Skull, Prost. Yeah, I mean, in terms of wheat beers, I have to say, it, it's really nice, very, very solid beer. Um, from what I gather, um, and from what Peter told me, these guys can be really, really inventive with some of the different beer styles that they do. This one, I think, it's very, it, it's, it's cool actually, because, you know, these breweries that are very, very quirky in all the things that they do, if they can brew styles of beer like this, if they can brew the straight up beers very, very solidly, then you know you've got a good quality brewer in there. And this is exactly that. This is probably one of their more conservative beers, I guess you could say. But it's just very, very solid. And I mean, I've said the same thing. Omnipoil here in Sweden are one of the kind of obvious answers to that. They put all these flavour essences and things into their imperial stouts and stuff like that. But if you actually have some of their straight up beers as well, you know, like the double IPAs, um, or you have some just, you know, some of the, I think it was between the lines or something like that, or in between the lines, which was a straight up imperial stout, they do these styles of beer really bloody well. And I get the feeling that the same can be said for, you know, Fry Guys beer culture. They can do the, the more traditional, more conservative beer styles really well, but they're very good at playing around with things as well. But this is a lovely this is a lovely Hefeweizen, but obviously it's a little bit more um forward in its hoppy bitterness compared to the traditional ones, as you would expect when it's a Hopfenweizen. But yeah, I do like this beer. Let's um, let's have a look at the malt base first then. So you've got a nice kind of, you can really feel the sort of wheaty smoothness, just blanket in the middle of your tongue in this one. You know, obviously with a Hefeweizen or a Hopfenweizen, whatever, that's going to be the base of the beer. Uh, on top of that, you start to get the thicker, doughy, bready, yeasty kind of things coming out of it. And it's got that definitely got those nice uh, banana flavours as well, which is really, really nice. Um, you can really feel that coming out. And I think this beer actually gets a little bit spicier the further that you go into the um, 
into the into the aftertaste of this one. The palette dries out a little bit, and you can feel those elements just becoming a little bit more um, thicker uh, and covering the tongue a little bit more. But to me, it, the the malt base does dry out a little bit and just becomes a bit more spicy the further into the flavour that you go. And it, it's really interesting how it does that actually. Yeah, it, smooth, it smooths out really nicely and I'm finding as well that the more I drink of this one, it does get slightly sweeter in the very centre of your palate as well. You can pick out that there's a little bit of a caramelly note in this one. It did have some caramel in the in the malt base there and of course if you think about there being caramel flavours in, in a Weizen beer, you really think it's going to lean more towards a Weizenbock or a Dunkelweizen even. Um, but this one, it, it definitely is a straight up, the, the malt base is more leaning towards like a Natterstrub Weizen, um, an unfiltered Weizen basically, rather than anything else. But the way that the malt base kind of thickens out is very nice. When you go out from the very centre of your palate towards the edge, you can pick up a little bit of a, a biscuity note to this one. If you think like McVitie's Digestives, you definitely get a little touch of that to this beer as well. But the malt base really is a very straight up traditional um, German Hefeweizen malt base, just with a slight little bit more sweetness than you might get from a normal Natterstrub uh, Weizen in fairness. But then again, um, a normal Weizen, if I remember properly, uh, normally is around kind of four and a half, five percent ABV. This one is six percent ABV, so perhaps you need a little bit of that malty sweetness just to cover the alcohol a little bit more. So that's maybe the reason for the presence of a little bit of caramel in there. Um, but yeah, I like how that, that malt base goes together, as I said, a little bit more spicy the further into the aftertaste you go. The hoppy side of things then, I guess, is where this beer does start to take off as well. Um, you're getting everything that you kind of expect out of this beer. You've got a nice little touch of earthiness in the back corners of your palate. That'll be coming from the mosaic. And as you come further forward along the side of the tongue, that just smooths out a little bit. You get a good little bit of a slightly spicy floral aromaticity on the front corners of the palate. And then around the very front curve of the tongue, you just get that lighter, uh, more grassy flavour out of this one. The green elements of the hops in this are, um, are really quite nice. I do like how the, the whole hoppy side of the flavour goes together actually. But yeah, it's it, this beer is it's nice because it's got a little bit of spiciness from the malt base as I'm saying those clovey notes but you've also got a bit of spiciness from the, the hoppy side of this one as well. So this beer, it does have that an almost kind of crisp mouth feel overall actually which I think is um is really really nice. So it's, it's good. I just I just really like how these flavors go together. As I say, probably one of the more conservative beers, but it just really works in terms of the flavors. Um, but on the fruity side of the hops, then as I always say, when you go behind the front curve of the tongue, that's where you get that nice oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters start to come out of the beer. For me, at the back of that oily bubble, you get the nice kind of darker grapefruits. I've always found grapefruit to be a bit more of a kind of sour flavour but you get that right at the back of the fruity side of the beer. When you come further forward on the tongue it's that's when you start to feel the more juicy tangerine orange notes coming out of it. And if you go to the very tip of your palate there's that blueberry note, that little blueberry complexity that you always get from the um, from the mosaic hop. I'm wondering in this if they've used a, you know if they have used a little bit of German noble hop as a you know, as like a base hop for this one, but I think it might have been Cascade that they've used as the base hop for this, and the Mosaic is more of being used as it has been added to the boil later, they're using it as more of an aroma hop or a, a dry hopping and things like that. Um, but I like, I, I, th I would suspect that it is that, that is the case that they've used Cascade as the main bittering hop and then they've added the Mosaic a little bit later in the boil and things like that to give you more flavour and aroma. But um, this is certainly a very nice uh, hop from Weizen. I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink this beer again. As I said, for me though, the, the Hefeweizen beers, regardless of what substyle it is, I've always found them to be a little bit... Um, what's the word? I've always found those to be a little bit heavy for me. I wouldn't ever really session those beers. I'd be more inclined to... Um, 
I'd definitely be a bit more inclined to kind of drink them um, and just, you know, use them as tasting beers as I do with the likes of Doppelbox and things like that. I don't get to drink too many uh, Weizen beers these days, but this one I have uh, enjoyed. I'm not sure if I could session it, though. To me, it's, it's still quite a heavy style, this. It's not the same as the Hellas and uh, the Dunkels and things like that, which you could easily session a few of, but I do like it as a style. Um, in terms of the mouthfeel, then, I would say this beer is, is mid-bodied. The carbonation is very, very smooth. It's got that nice, slightly thicker quality that you would expect of a, of a Hefeweizen or, or indeed a Hopfenweizen. Um, the mouthfeel does have a, a good little bit of a... it's got some oily elements to it but it does have a certain degree of crispness to it because of the spicy flavours in the in the beer that you have. So the malt base, like I said, has a, a big smoothness and a big thickness to it. There's a little touch of sweetness in there as well. Good little bit of a, a hoppy bitterness. It almost has a spicy quality as I was mentioning. I think if we're talking about IBUs for this beer, it might be somewhere around the kind of 40 IBU mark, somewhere in that region. Yeah. I think about a 40 IBU mark, uh, the 40 IBU mark from this beer, maybe 35, somewhere in that kind of uh, a sort of ballpark figure there. But nice juicy fruity elements to this beer as well. And I would say that it does dry out a little bit the further that you go into the aftertaste with this one. But to me, very, very nice beer that has that kind of traditional German Hefeweizen element to it, but has a little bit of the New World American hops, exactly what you would expect from this, from the hop and Weizen style but just a very, very well executed beer and you know, what more do you need? Like I say, probably one of the more conservative beers you're going to get from these guys. I remember watching some of Peter's reviews and thinking, you know, geez, how would, why would they even think to try that? But this one is definitely one of their more conservative beers, but I think it works um, really quite nicely and I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink it again. I do hope that I can try a few more of their more unusual beers actually going forward and I have seen a couple of them there are plans for a few of them to come through the uh, the small party or so we'll just see what happens with that but yeah it's been really cool to review this one for you as my first beer review from Fry Guys Beer Kilter after wanting to review things for so long but let's leave it at that for this one just a really nice uh, beer this and if you like the Hefeweizen and style or the American wheat beers, or indeed specifically the hop from Weizen style, this is one that I think you are um, really going to quite enjoy. A little bit more spicy than some of the other Weizen beers that I've come across before. But yeah, um, a really nice beer this, and I was glad I was able to review it. The Alf, uh, the Alf Schneider Hop from Weizen from Freigeist Beer Kultur from uh, Stolberg, Stolberg, sorry, just outside of. Um, just outside of Aachen in the western part of Germany. Once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Uh, until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comments section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Freigars Beer, uh, beer Kultur. And do let me know any other particularly nice hop and Weizens that I should review for you on the channel. I don't get, as I say, I don't get to review too many wheat beers these days, but I always enjoy doing them when I when I get the chance. But thank you again for watching, and I will catch you guys very soon. The Alf Schneider Hop and Weizen from uh, Freigeist Beer Kultur, just outside of Aachen in Germany. Thanks again for watching, and I will catch you guys later. Make sure you try this beer while it's in the regular range at Seestempelagat. Cheers.